Thank you very much, Deborah. Um, I would like to start by thanking the NIDA School uh, of Translation Studies and more particularly Prof, uh, Professor James Maxey and uh, Dr. Deborah Shad for the kind invitation. I also would like to thank Michael Hemingway for his uh, kind and very effective technical support to allow me uh, to be among you, uh, albeit uh, virtually. And uh, I would like also to thank uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kobus Mare to uh, to give me the opportunity to um, uh, to read beforehand uh, his uh, his valuable work. And uh, uh, but I would like to just to start with um, some introductory points where I would uh, uh, explain my uh, my enthusiasm about about uh, the, the work uh, that I've read uh, for very uh, specific reasons. And then maybe in the, uh, in the form of what a philosopher probably should uh, be doing, um, you know, kind of uh, engaging the discussion with uh, uh, Professor Murray, uh through a string of questions. I, I, I'm, I, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm really in a position uh, to be lecturing here, um, especially in front of uh, of those eminent uh, academics. But what I'd like to do is 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 really question some some of the um, uh, assumptions, sometimes philosophical assumptions that are um, uh, underlying uh, the uh, the conceptualization of translation as presented by uh, Dr. Murray. So um, the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, I, I like the systematicity of your demonstrations and the extent of your uh, knowledge in the field of complexity, including some incursions in natural sciences like the mechanics of fluid, for example, although uh, disputable for, uh, for some reasons, as just explained by uh, Dr. Tomashko. In fact, what is very seducing in this, uh, the interdisciplinarity uh, uh, is uh, that complexity seems to entail um, for the purposes of your research. The second point is that one excellent example of the, the systematicity is the logical unfolding uh, that is going on starting from, uh, for example, uh, what we see in your book, 2014 book, uh, from ontology, to epistemology and then to methodology as you have presented uh, through one of your um, articles. Keeping in mind that each of these dimensions is generally grounded in the one coming before. You cannot think of how you know um, without the object of knowledge and you cannot know how to go about the, to investigate the object of knowledge without understanding the proper condition. Of knowledge. Uh, the third point uh, is uh, that most interesting of all is the holistic approach uh, to translation that uh, you're taking and that's probably why you have emphasized uh, uh, in your book notably the fact that you're proposing a philosophy of translation which I think is more of an epistemology of translation from the vantage point of complexity theory. As a matter of fact, uh, if you agree that you are you have a holistic approach, I, I would then be very interested to hear from you about what can be at the top of your nested hierarchical system beyond the sociological uh, level. So, uh, and, 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 and a very last uh, point here, uh, I, I, I'd like to, to uh, uh, what I like also about uh, about your uh, your writings is that the fact that you are extending uh, the field of translation studies by looking at other forms of translation, for example, for example, the, uh, the intersemiotic translations, and uh, extending also the field to other objects of translation, as you have explained uh, some of the examples uh, uh, during the the interview. Uh, so now I have two sets of questions. I would say a set of bigger questions and then a set of smaller questions. 
And if I don't have the time to go through all my smaller questions, it doesn't matter. The, the most important thing is that I can put through my, my bigger questions. So uh, the first question is, is, is in, I've been kind of puzzled uh, about uh, your statement in one of your articles. I think it's uh, the, the uh, later article, which is the August article, uh, where you start by, by really, I mean, putting, I think, uh, uh, the, uh, clearly uh, the f saying the fact that uh, you're saying this ontology and epistemology. So for, for me, I have a real problem uh, understanding whether your conceptualization is an ontology or is it an epistemology. And if you say that they are both an ontology and epistemology, then maybe you should uh, maybe clarify your uh, your colors, your philosophical colors, uh, in terms of uh, I think that one of the um, approaches that is uh, that would conflate or reduce uh, the ontology to the epistemology is uh, the uh, constructivist or even the postmodernist uh, approach. So if it is the case, are you a postmodernist? Uh, which is which is not a, a problem in itself, of course. Um, you you chose complexity theory, uh, uh, I believe, maybe because the object of translation studies is complex. Uh, translation uh, being the 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 object here which is a subsystem of the more complex semiotic system. If the latter is complex, at which level of the nested hierarchy are we as individual researchers? I guess as such, we cannot be at the sociological level as individuals. So the idea is to, to, to understand if we are talking about uh, 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 an epistemology, I mean, it means that we are taking into account the position of the researcher. A third question is, whatever may be the ontological status or approach, what matters to us as researchers who study semiotic events and representations are the epistemological challenges that we face as a result of our constructivist and interpretive, interpretivist approach. Don't you think that your conceptualization would then necessarily be only and exclusively an epistemology rather than an ontology? Isn't the breadth of the unknown and unknowable patch of reality a good reason for this? In Again, still in the uh, the bigger question, and, and 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 because they all kind of uh, you know uh, are go around the the notion of this distinction between ontology and epistemology. Uh, that's why I consider them of uh, of the bigger questions. So the 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 last bigger question I have in, in this regard is, in fact, isn't your choice of complexity theory mainly motivated by an epistemological reason, which is the impossibility of apprehending all facets of reality and more so the unemerged parts of it, which never came to existence. So these are the, the bigger questions. So uh, I'm going to move to other considerations uh, and, and, and questions. If complexity theory is all encompassing, why would you need for supplementary for supplementary theories such as world theory and narrative theory? Is world theory compensating for the absence of the position of the observer, which brings us again back to the the question about distinguishing ontology and epistemology? A third question is. Why, what do you mean by power? I mean, there was a very interesting uh, discussion uh, that you uh, developed in, uh, in uh, uh, 
uh, your article in response to Halverson and and Baumgarten, and the you know the question of power was coming again and again. So what do you mean exactly by power when you uh, you you don't really define power? Uh, it seems like a, a given, but I don't think it's a it's a it's a simple and uh, obvious uh, notion. Is hierarchy enough to illustrate power? Nested hierarchy seems like a natural object that cannot be resisted as if it is not constructed. This has nothing to do with, with Marx and Foucault, obviously, neither postcolonialism. Uh, a fourth question that I have as well is, is with regard to the, um, the notion of unrealized possibilities, which will lead to the question about the downward causation that I'm still not able to grasp. So why the unrealized, and here I quote you, the unrealized possibilities now become a set of constraints on the whole, or uh, end of quote. And how, quote again, unrealized possibilities are causally as influential as the material substrate of a system or the realized possibilities themselves, end of quote, or Quote again, unrealized possibilities constrain the further development of the parts, end of quote. And this is in the uh, effects, cause and effects uh, article uh, of yours. Um, I think I have still four more minutes and uh, uh, I'm gonna keep going, going with, my, with my string of questions, if you don't mind. Um, I can understand uh, uh, the upward uh, causation uh, in the expression of the process of emergence, but I have still a hard time, again, understanding the notion uh, of downward causation making sense uh, to me. A, a sixth question would be, you speak about the necessity to introduce uh, in the use uh, of complexity by the humanities Qualitative methodology. So that was the, the purpose and the object of your uh, article um, uh, uh, on interlingual translation with the example of Madonella, of which you made a presentation this morning. Um, so you're, you're saying that you're proposing a qualitative approach, but when one observes and examines your application, it seems that all your findings, and, and, and here uh, I'm I'm referring to the example of the eddy in the river, uh, in the stream. Um, it seems like, like all your findings are underpinned by quantitative data. It looks like, I mean, I, I've pinned down the notion of probability so many times, and it seems like you're speaking about statistics, but without the, the numbers. Uh, it looks like, all the data that we uh, that we would see uh, could are kind of veiled by uh, you know the fuzziness of a qualitative approach, and that every had we the power uh, you know the data the data processing power, uh, then we would you know get answers to uh, you know some of the questions that you're asking. Uh, so. I would like to know to which extent is it really qualitative? Isn't it like a, you know, a masked uh, type of quantitative uh, approach, or or what? Um, a seventh question that I have is: uh, Don't you think that any attempt at modern uh, modelization is reductionist? Isn't this the very nature? of theory to be modeling? So this is a very basic question, uh, I know, but I, I think it, this is something that, you know, comes back and back again. I mean, you know, uh, even the, the, uh, the drawing that you made and, and, and even the um, 3D modelization that you, you are intending to make would be reductionist in, in, in uh, you know, by definition. 
The eighth question I have, you have in all honesty tried to answer Baumgarten's criticism about the notion of power. Uh, although I don't really agree with the, the fact that power is implied by the very hierarchical structure that you're uh, been exposing. Uh, but and, and that you are also addressing uh, it in your uh, uh, approach. But why didn't you challenge or simply address the question of ideology that Baumgarten has, has uh, I think, uh, uh, mentioned in the, the very end of his review? Uh, that would have been, I think, uh, interesting. And dismissing the question was uh, puzzling to me. Well, I mean, your intent was really to answer the notion of power and where power is situated in your uh, in your conceptualization. The ninth question, and I will end with this one because I think uh, I'm, uh, that my time is up. Would you agree that power differential takes place not only uh, between systems as a nested hierarchy, but also between communication or semiotic? Uh, uh, instances within the same system. Uh, something, for example, that uh, we we can see in uh, in Niklas Luhmann's, uh, you know, uh, system theory. Uh, if yes, could you give an example by using Madonella uh, as an example? And I think uh, I'm I'm done with uh, with my time. Uh, I'm over uh, 16 minutes. So uh, I'll stop here and maybe continue the discussion during the uh, the yeah uh, yeah during the the discussion with uh, all the the panelists. Thank you very much.